Rail signals. How do they work anyway? I'm Crydax, and today we'll be taking a brief look at rail signals, how they separate rails and intersections into blocks, and how they can keep your trains from doing this. With train signals, the first thing that you should do is go into your settings, open up interface, and make sure that show rail block visualization is turned on. Without that setting, you can't see the pretty colors of the separate blocks, like the magenta and teal here. What rail signals do essentially is cut the train tracks into multiple blocks, and the signals will turn red if there is a train in a block in front of another train. So this green train right now has a green light because it can travel into the teal block. There are no trains in it. If we were to place another train in that teal block, you can see now this signal is red. The green train cannot go forwards. You may also notice that this is on the right hand side of the track from the train's point of view. It, regardless of whether you have a two lane system or a one lane system, a rail signal is always on the right side of the track. That means that this track is designated for right to left travel because of where this signal is. If you want to designate a track for two directional travel, which I wouldn't recommend unless you know what you're doing with chain signals, which is in the next video, or if you just have one train running back and forth on the same track, that's fine then. Then you need a signal on both sides of the track at the same spot. You'll notice it won't let me put the signal anywhere else, and that will designate it for bi-directional travel. Again, I recommend only doing that if you have a single train or if you understand chain signals. The basics of signals is that we don't want to enter an intersection unless it's safe. So we need a signal before the intersection to tell the train, hey, red light, there's someone else in this block. Then we also need a signal after the intersection to make sure, hey, let the people know that we're out of the intersection block. If we didn't have this signal, then a train way off in the distance would still be occupying the block of the intersection. So we need to be able to both know not to enter and then know when we've left the intersection. So before and after the intersection, we have signals. Same from the train coming from the iron mine. We need a signal before and after the intersection. And you'll notice that has successfully cut my intersection into a different block. We have a magenta color only here at the intersection. If you want bi-directional travel, again, you will need to add the signals on the opposite side of the track. And now we could successfully have these trains going back and forth with no collisions. It really is that simple. But what if you have more than just two train tracks crossing Crydax? Well, it's just as simple. You can add signals on diagonal track, and just like before, to designate bi-directional travel, we put the signals across from each other. And this right here will prevent any trains from entering the intersection unless it's empty. And as soon as the train leaves the intersection, that block will then be designated as open again. Here we can see an example of this intersection performing marvelously where trains will not enter unless the intersection is clear. And as soon as they leave the intersection, then the block is marked as clear. A much more common form of train intersections is a two lane system. Similarly to before, we will put a signal before the intersection and a signal after to indicate that the train is left. You will need this on all the possible directions. That cuts our intersection into a magenta block and only one train at a time would be allowed in. If there's another train inside that block, you'll notice all the signals entering that block turn red and trains would not be allowed to enter. It is worth noting that breaking distance is accounted for with trains. So the signal will turn red if another train isn't yet in the intersection, but is going so fast that it wouldn't be able to stop in time. And if it were to slam on the brakes, it would still be in the intersection. So uh, signals are not going to have to worry about how fast your train is going or what the braking distance is. Here we can see an intersection with both left hand and right hand turns signaled the exact same way we signaled the last intersection. You'd be surprised at how much throughput a system like this can actually handle. You may be thinking, but Crydax, I don't understand rail signals or chain signals, so I'll never be as efficient. Well, the fact is, this is still quite efficient, and it takes a very large base for an intersection like this to not be enough throughput. Here is an example of a two-lane system again with only left turns from the top and bottom 
for simplicity of understanding what's going on. And let's say you thought to yourself, oh, we are just supposed to add rail signals before and after intersections within the intersection before crossings and splits. And that way we'll have even more efficient trains. Maybe you've heard that. First of all, why is this one blinking? A blinking light simply means that it can't successfully cut the intersection because it's connected in a different spot. You'll notice even if we were to slice this magenta line right here, well, it's connected around the back. So you do need a signal in all the places where it would need to be cut, and that will cut it into a separate block. But why shouldn't you do this? Well, this can get trains stuck. Unless you know how to use chain signals properly, this is gonna result in deadlocks. Let me show you. We'll go ahead and activate the trains here. And, oh no, now they're never going to move because the bottom train wants to go into this magenta block here, which is occupied, and the top train wants to go into the yellow block here, which is occupied. Deadlocks are very annoying and have to be manually deconstructed and fixed. And those are the basics to rail signals. I hope this video was helpful. I will be covering chain signals in the next video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.